In this episode, we're going to take a look at a bunch of GFCI plugs that have failed. We're going to make a GFCI test device, and we're going to figure out what went wrong with these GFCI plugs. Check it out. So what we have today is I have seven defective GFCI plugs that was shipped in from a viewer. And, and a note that he says on here is, uh, enclosed you'll find seven faulty GFCI receptacles, both 15 and 20 amp varieties. Of course, the 20 amp ones are these ones here, right? That's a 20 amp, not when there's a 20 amp. These others are 15 amp. He says uh, they're actually manufactured by Hubble. And he's tested them on his bench and previously he noticed that the fault code would go away once power was restored. But if you tried to trip them with this GFCI plug tester, it would not trip. And after a few moments, the fault light would come back on. So we're going to test these out. We'll, we'll test them. We'll give a fault with a, a resistor to, uh, to ground, which should trip them. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if these will work and show up a fault. And then we're going to take them apart and uh, take a look at them. And he says here he's, uh, he says, uh, the one that has a, the, the light gray backing is fine. So this one works. These ones are all defective. But this one here, he says, all the units with the black back are the faulty ones. And interestingly enough, there's one that has a light gray backing that is fine. And it was removed just to match the new Leviton receptacles he replaced them with. And he's also included one of those, so I can take that apart. So, I've got a Leviton here, and then these ones are all Hubble. And he's giving me a Leviton. This looks like a brand new one, which I can take apart so that we can examine the differences. So, this is going to be a teardown video of some faulty and not faulty plugs. So this one apparently is good. And these other ones are, are all bad. Now what's the difference between these two units besides the color of the, the, the back? This is a 20 amp, right? It's got both have a red and a green light and a red light apparently indicates it's faulty. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll take these apart and we'll test them out and see what they do. First things first though, I need to connect them up to my test cable. So I have a grounded cord that I can connect up. We'll just strip and connect it up to these and then proceed to test. So we got a line and a hot side or load side. We're going to obviously connect it to the, the line side. And first things first, I will tin the end of the wire so that I can put it under the, the screw terminals. And uh, then we'll, we'll put some taper on here so I don't give myself a shock when I'm testing. And uh, then we'll test it and we'll see if these things trip and whether they reset. And I'm going to be doing this not on an isolation transformer. So I'm going to be plugged directly into power to do this. Get the new Weller iron out. I got to get some new tips for this thing. The the tip I, I've got one small tip, but um, the other tips I've got are all these humongous solder tips, which are a little bit on the large side for the type of work that I normally do. So I say this soldering iron is quite chunky compared to what I'm used to. I used one of these for for many many years when I was in the business. Okay, so first things first, let's connect to the line side. All right, I've got the wires connected. Let's power the unit up and see if it will work. And we are in a fault condition. It says replace if red. Let's just try to test it and reset it and see if it will reset. Okay, now we are reset. And if I test it, it should trip, but it's not tripping. Let's see if we've got any power available. Let me grab a lamp or something to plug in. Okay, this just tripped on its own. Let's just reset it. 
didn't even get to plug anything in and it just popped on its own. So definitely it, it has a fault. I'll just unplug it and reset it and we'll watch it do it again. Okay, let's see if it will reset. Okay, it's on. My light is on. You can see the light here. And we'll just see how long this thing takes to trip. Because it did trip on its own. You can see the light is on here. It's like when I push the test button, nothing happens. See, when you, when you push the test, it should immediately trip, but it's not. And now it tripped. And now it won't reset. It's got a fault. We'll reset this again. Just see how long it goes before it trips without me intervening and touching the test button, because that should have tripped immediately when I pushed the test button. It didn't, but several seconds after I pushed the test button, it went into a fault condition. So let's just see if it will trip without me touching it. And the first time it tripped without you know, anything plugged in. There, so we know is defective. Let's take this thing apart and see what's inside. Didn't even get to test this thing to see if it would trip under a fault condition because it tripped on its own. So it looks like all I need to do to open this up is just break off these tabs. This thing's not going back together. You would think that I could just squeeze the tabs down and it would pop open, but I'm not going to get that lucky. The way that they designed these things, they're designed to go together once and not to come apart. So I'm going to have to break these tabs off. That's okay because it's not going back together. Okay, so here's what's inside. There is a couple chips, as you can see, and a bunch of circuitry to detect when there is a fault. What you're doing when you when you press the fault button on any of these testers, what it is in fact doing is it's just going to be completing the circuit. A resistor is going to be placed across the circuit right here. And if I look underneath this, there's going to be a resistor. So let's just pop this out and see what size of resistor they're using as part of the circuit that trips it. But it, you'll see that there's a, a solenoid here. So when you reset it, you reset the, the, the circuit and when it trips, there's a solenoid here that, that, that uh, pulls the switch apart, opens the contacts. This is the second one, and this one seems to be functioning when you reset it and hit the test button. This one appears to function. The light will be on now. We can trip this with a resistor. You just throw a resistor between ground and the hot, and it should trip. So let me just grab a resistor, and we'll see if we can trip this thing by providing a ground fault. So to test the GF plug we're going to build ourselves a GFI tester 
using a three-prong receptacle. I'm just going to use this old receptacle I grabbed out of an old power supply. That way I could just use a regular uh, three-conductor grounded outlet like this. A doorbell push button and a couple of resistors. The circuit is actually quite simple. We're going to put a 100k ohm resistor between the hot and the neutral. That's just to provide a small load so that the when we're under test there is a load uh, present and then a 5k resistor is going to be connected to the switch which is going to go to ground that way when we push the button in we're going to put a 5k load between the hot side here and ground which should cause the the GFI breaker to trip immediately so let's get wiring I'm just going to connect the components onto the switch that way everything can all be wrapped up so it's safe and then cord from here over to the switch we can we can encapsulate everything together wrap it up in tape for that matter so let's uh, start by clearing off the old wires off of the old outlet here so first we'll put our 100k resistor between the the line and the neutral. I can just put that right on the back here of the of the actual plug itself. So we'll just solder that down to here. Next I'll prep my wires for the switch, so we'll just tin the end of the wires and put these onto the push button switch. Again this is something that is just temporary when you're actually going to be testing a GFI outlet. This is not something that's going to be left plugged in at any time, it's just for plugging it in for testing a GFI outlet and then unplugging it. So now we've connected our two wires. We're going to hook up our 5K resistor to one wire and we'll throw some heat shrink tubing around this and then connect that to the hot terminal. Connect the five point. I'm using a 5.6k resistor. I'm just going to solder that down to the hot terminal. And then I'll bring my double heat shrink tubing up to cover this. I'm using two pieces of heat shrink tubing just so that I have extra support even though the wire is not going to move once it's uh, in place and it's all taped up. I only get the option to do this once. I'll actually plug my heat gun into this, this GFI that's under test right now because it's plugged into power. Alright, so let's uh, shrink the heat shrink tubing. And then I'll put the second piece of heat shrink tubing over top. Next I'll connect the other wire to the ground side and then we're going to wrap this up in electrical tape. And then the 
this entire unit. We'll wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up in tape and then tape the two of them together. We'll just tuck these together and tape them up. Covered it completely so that there's nothing exposed. When we measure with our meter, between the line and the neutral, we should see 100k, and we should see about 5k when I, or 5.6k, when I depress the button between the, the line side and ground so here is the between the hot side and neutral is 100k and which side was the line on this now and there's this side here line and and uh, ground when i push the button in should be 5k or 5.6k which we have 5.6k. So this should be a tester that will work. And if I plug this into my GFI plug that's under test right now, this one right here on my workbench, when I depress the button, it should trip. So here it is plugged in. We plug the other end into here, like that. And when I push this button, it trips. That's how you make a GFI tester, by the way. So this GFI plug works. Does the same as pushing the test button on here. If I push the test button, which I can't get at, because it's got a plug in the way, but the test button does the same. So this GFI plug is functional. Let's test the remainders that I received using my home-built tester. I should point out that this Hubble GFI plug is one that does not have self-test. These are different. These ones all have the self-test built in. There's this gray one. This gray one also has self-test. This one's supposedly working. This one's okay, so I'm going to mark this one as okay. I can find my my felt tip marking pen all that I've got here. This one is good. Let's test the next one. Next one. This one's, of course, showing in a fault condition. Let's reset it. And we'll plug our tester in and see whether this one will trip. And will it reset once it has been tripped? So we've got our test plugged in. And, oh, look, it's not working. This one is not tripping when I push my test button. How about if I push the test button on here? So this one's got a fault condition. I wonder if it will actually trip on its own like the previous one. There, you see it tripped on its own. I didn't touch it. And it's flashing to indicate that there's a fault. So this one will not reset now because it is in a fault condition. So this one here is FUBAR.
let's test the next one. Okay, this is the next one. This was not in a fault condition when I grabbed it. Will it test? Oh, see, it's not tripping when I push the test button. It's also not tripping when I press my my fault, when I actually put a fault on the line. Nothing's tripping. What do you bet it'll trip itself? See, right? This is a great example of bad GFI plug. The guy's being electrocuted. It takes the plug 15 seconds to trip. That's why you always test your GFI plugs. They always have a, a sign on them that says, test monthly. I would advise probably testing them more than monthly. I know I test my GFIs on a regular basis, like ones that are in the, the, the washroom, for example, because you just never know, right? They can go faulty like this one. Oh, it just, I didn't touch it. I just happened to pick it up. I was going to push the button again, but I didn't push the button. But that's how long it took for this stupid thing to trip. And this one actually will reset. Now it's working. Now it's working every time. But the fact that it didn't trip when I tested it initially, see now it's working. Test button doesn't work. But it's working when I when I trip it, but the test button is not working. So this would be another one that you would not trust because it needs to trip when you push the test button not tripping when you push the test button it's no good next is another one that's got a red light reset it does the test button work no does my button work no not working another one that's foobar you know what's likely bad on these is it's got capacitors. The fact that it started working after it sat for a while and what I was able to reset it, there's a good chance what's gone wrong with this is there's two electrolytic capacitors on this circuit and there's a good chance that those electrolytic capacitors have failed and that's probably what's wrong with the switch. Let's just pull this one apart while we're working on it here. Let's just let's just rip this one apart and see whether those caps measure up. I've got my ESR tester here. We'll measure these in the circuit and see what they measure like. But I bet you that's what's wrong with these plugs is that they have failed due to bad electrolytic capacitors. So we'll just zero out the meter and we'll measure these two caps in circuit before I remove them. This one here is measuring 0.69 and it is a 100 microfarad at 16 volts so 0.7 is our limit and we're at 0.69 so we're pretty close and then the other one is over here that's in circuit by the way the other one is this one over here and this one here is open ha 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 I think we just discovered the problem hey it just tripped on its own so the entire time I've been talking here after I push that button I'm being electrocuted and this stupid plug would not trip but and it won't reset either at this point it's detecting that it has a fault so it will not allow me to reset it if I unplug and plug back in In other words, I've tripped the breaker and I've reset the breaker, and now I can reset the plug. And will it trip? No, it won't. So I'm being electrocuted right now. I'm being electrocuted and this thing's not tripping. Chances are it's got a faulty cap. Let's remove it and see. We'll measure this one out of circuit and determine if that's what the fault is. I bet it is. I'm going to rip out some components here just so that can get at it a little easier to pull this cap out since this thing's not going back together oh good I stopped being electrocuted I'm already dead let's get this cap out of here Hard 
to get at this one. I'm just going to try to pry it out, lift it out so we can test it out of circuit. It's already testing. It's already testing open in circuit, so I just want to measure it out of circuit and just see how bad it is. Okay, where do we go? It's out here somewhere. There's the cap. This one is a, uh, what is it? 10 at 25 volts. So 10 at 25 volts should be no worse than 5.3 ohms. Open. I would explain why it's not working. What's our capacitance wise in microfarads? Yeah, what? 0 0.3? So 0 0.3432, 0 0.32, and it's supposed to be 10. I think we know what the fault with these GFI plugs are. I bet if I were to pull all these ones that are FUBAR apart and test the same capacitor, I bet they'd all be bad. And since I know you guys want to know that, let's destroy another one. Because obviously none of these are going to go into service. They are all going to be disposed of. And I'm going to destroy them before I dispose of them so that someone, if someone finds them in the garbage, they're not going to pick them up and say, oh, look, I got a GFI, let's use it. No, let's not use it. It's broken. So let's get into this one. They don't make these things easy to get into, do they? I was going to insert my favorite Hubble joke here for those old enough to know what I'm talking about. The last time we heard Hubble and defective products was to do with the Hubble Space Telescope that they launched what 40 odd years ago I guess now I think it was close to 40 years and it was blind basically they ground the mirror wrong <laughs> so it's ironic that a GFI plug bearing the same name a safety device doesn't work all right so let's uh, get into this one and Tear it down to that same capacitor. Get rid of this garbage. And uh, what do you bet that cap is bad? ESR test it. Just test it in circuit. There's no need to remove it, but I bet the ESR on this cap is also wide open. Oh, what do you know? It's open. You guys see that? It's open. I'm sure that they're all the same. It's going to be the same cap sitting right next to a resistor. I doubt that it's going to be getting much heat from this though because it's it's a what uh, about a 2.7k resistor. I doubt there'd be much heat off that. But uh, just the just the design of it, bad bad parts. So critical safety device, my eye. Let's check the others out and see how the others are and maybe we'll pull one of the Levitons apart just to uh, look at the difference in the Leviton see what the design of the Leviton is like compared to these other ones. So here's the Leviton. We'll test this one. I don't, almost don't even want to pull this apart because this one's like new. But this one might come apart quite easily. It's got screws in it so I may be able to pull this one apart and put it back together without destroying it. Let's see here. Take it apart and then and then put it together and test it. If you're wondering what that racket in the background we're talking is I I've had a movie playing on my laser disc player, a movie called 49th Parallel. It's a war movie well, about the Germans and the Germans in, under, in 
World War II when they were trying to uh, enter Canada and get into the States and hide in the States because the Americans at the time were not in the war. So they were trying to get there. So here's here's this one. I'll lift this off. Does this come off? Totally different construction. Wow. Like completely different on this one. that out of there and lift out like this doesn't even want to come off on this one remove these stickers I think the top and bottom half will come apart if I remove these stickers. I should be able to lift the back off it so we can just take a look at the at the uh, design. And hopefully this will go back together and function. Yeah, here comes the back off of this one. Hopefully there won't be a bunch of things falling apart. You can see now pieces flying out. <laughs> Nervous time. Okay, look at the difference. Look at the difference. This one's got it's got they've got uh, like glue on it. They've got a conformal coating on the board. Check the difference out. Look at the build quality of this thing. Like they've got a conformal coating on this board on all these parts and I don't want to pull a board out because it's soldered down um, these tabs here so I don't want to pull the board out but uh, I don't I see solid capacitor on this one right here so completely different construction Wow. You guys see that? Or was I off camera? I wasn't even looking, but totally different construction. This one here, um, the, the, I'd have to undo these, unsolder these in order to pull the circuit board out, so I'm not going to do that. But it, I don't, looking down here, I don't see from, from where I'm sitting here, I don't see any electrolytic capacitors in here. I see a solid cap here, up there. But I don't see any electrolytics, which may be why this one, these ones are better. We'll just uh, reassemble this again and we'll test it and see that it works once I put it all back together. So pop that like that. And then pop the top piece on. But that conformal coating was. Was, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting. This one might be an outdoor rated outlet. And the other one's not. Because of these other ones here. There's no coating on here at all. On these. Load wire or load sticker it blocks those ones off we'll connect this up and uh, I'll do a test on it see whether it still works or whether I wrecked it okay power we'll reset this there we go it is working. We'll test. Okay, this is also one that has self-test on it as well. It's got a green light that turns red if, it, if there's a fault. If there's a fault in the unit itself, we'll plug in our test button, and works. When I reset it, you'll see the light will go red momentarily here as I reset it. 
then green when it's got power. So this is a new outlet which I'm going to hang on to because you never know when you need a GFI and it works. I'm going to continue to test the rest remainder of these uh, Hubble jacks. I'll test the gray one. He said this one's this one tests okay so we'll test this one out and then I'll test the others and just condemn them as I, I mean I'm probably going to condemn this one as well. Maybe we'll open up this one. I'll open I'll probably tear this one down because we'll take this one apart later. But we'll take this one apart and see what the difference is between this one and the others. Does it still use electroglytic capacitors or is it a different design? Which is always possible, right? The thing with these ones is once I take these apart, they're not going back together. They're, the, the way they're designed, if you crack them apart, everything's going to fall apart on them. But uh, again, being the same brand as We've had so much trouble with, with the rest of them. Do I trust this one? I don't think so. But we'll try it out. Try this one out and see whether this one works. This one's working now. And it trips. And it resets. And it trips. So this one. And this one here, the fellow that sent me this told me that this one was okay. So this is another one that's in a, that's faulty apparently. Oh, this one doesn't even come on. Well, now it is. And it doesn't trip when I push the button. How long is it going to take? You know, 10 seconds, we're already dead if you're being electrocuted. But yeah, you know nothing nothing there nothing there Well, we're waiting for this one to trip. Maybe we'll try to take this one apart and not destroy it like the others. I, I'm just curious to see what the difference is, whether it is any different. What's the numbers on the back? Any different issue number? Hmm. No. I mean, they, they look the same. This one still has not tripped. That's the scary thing. But at least you know if it's bad if you push the test and it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh, look, it just tripped on its own. So, and now it won't reset. And it, it tells it it's a fault. It says, replace GFCI if red light flashes. So at least it knows that it's shot and it will not allow it to be reset. Right? It won't. It's latched out. So we are opening up the of gray one because I want to see if there's any difference between the, the the gray one and the black back whether they are the same or whether they're different they could very well be totally different and and that's why the gray back they may have determined that there was a design problem with the others and uh, they changed the color to differentiate the difference and the of course the only way to tell is the public movie just ended to pull them apart and, and actually take a look I mean I'll never be putting this into service anyway the Leviton one on the other hand well that one might go into service at some point if I need a GFI because it's new but these ones I would never put into service Trying to take the back off it without everything else falling apart because I really just want to see what's on the circuit board and behind it. Okay, it's a little different design, looks like already, doesn't it? Maybe not. 
looks that way. No, it's the same. Oh, it's different. No, no, it's the same. It's the same. Different, looks like a different brand of capacitor. They look, uh, they're a different color. Look at that other board again, wherever I did with it. Uh, yeah, they're a different brand of capacitor. Th these ones are black. And this one here, it's a uh, uh, light blue, like a violet. It's a uh, Capion, looks like. What's well, this one? Yeah, definitely a different brand of capacitor in this. And a different brand of uh, MOV, right? Other than that, they look to be the same. They look to be identical. Just a different brand of capacitor in it. So that's probably why it's a different color back. Is they've they changed it into differentiate the between the two of them, they have uh, made them look a little bit different. And that's also something manufacturers used to do, and they would keep that as a guarded secret to the you know to the insiders. I wonder if I can put this thing back together and actually have it work. Then if someone called in and they were having a problem, they'd say, "What color is the back of it?" Someone says, "Black." Oh, okay. We'll send you a new one. And they send them one of the gray ones. Try and put this one back together and see if it works. I know there's a plunger that goes in the bottom here. That's for the solenoid. And then there's this little spring as well. It goes in the bottom here. I saw that fall out when I took it apart. And the hot side is like this. So this goes down like that. This uh, was on top. And which was which? Went this way, I think. Yeah. Only goes on one way because it's got to fit through the little, the little test for the test hole right here, and then this piece goes on top. Well, this piece goes on here. This is the outlet. It sits in there like that, and then. This whole piece fits on top. Do we dare try this? Well, let's just see whether this thing still works now that it's been put back together even though it's going to be tossed in the garbage once I uh, confirm that it works uh, I think I put it together wrong <laughs> oh well it was never going to get put back into service anyway <laughs> now I can throw it out
maybe I put that solenoid together wrong. I wonder. Let's just take a look at the, another one here and just see what way that solenoid came apart. That flew apart on me. Which way did they, which way the pieces went into it? Uh, where did they go? Oh, you know what? I put it together backwards. I can see right now. Ah, let's just fix it. I see exactly what I did wrong. The spring goes in first and then the then then the plunger. So it was the the plunger on the bottom here. Just lift this whole thing up. This piece here. It goes in the other way. The spring went in first. And then the plunger. So the spring inside like that. And then this piece went in like that. Okay, now it should work when I throw it back together. power now. It reset. Does it work? Yes. It works. So this one's functional. And the caps are unlikely to fail on this one because they're a different brand. And I assume that's why it's a gray back. But this one is good. Although I won't be putting it into service just because it's been opened up. Although it's probably fine. It's just that the the plastic tabs on the side are kind of buggered up from opening it up. But the the, the receptacle itself is is fine. Electronic wise. It's just the, the locking tabs that lock it together are broken. But everything else on here is fine. So this one's okay. So yeah, it's uh junk, junk, junk. Anyway, that's um how you make yourself a tester. That way I did it this way so I didn't have to hack another cord, right? I had a plug, so anyway, that's my little GFI tester. I'll write on here so that everyone knows what it is. GFI test. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.